For more than a quarter century, Jay McInerney has been one of the most conspicuous and productive fiction writers of his generation. Best known for novels like Bright Lights, Big City, and Brightness Falls, McInerney is also an accomplished short story writer, and he has a new collection. It's called How It Ended, and the title implies that McInerney, who for so long has been a laureate of Manhattan and its ups and downs, has returned to his subject at a time when the city is in a different place from where it was some years ago. Recently, Jay McInerney visited the Times, and he and I talked about the art of the short story, the demands of the novel, and the changing landscape of the city he loves. Jay McInerney, you are best known as a novelist, but you've brought out a collection of short stories, How It Ended, that actually covers the whole of what's now become a long <laughs> and quite productive career. Why did you decide to do this at this time? Well, you know, like most novelists, I cut my teeth writing short stories. You don't suddenly, at the age of 21 or 2, decide to sit down and write a novel. and um, I also studied with uh, two of the great masters of the forum when I went to Syracuse University for, um, for graduate school, uh, Raymond Carver and Tobias Wolf were my teachers there. And I decided that I wanted to really see if I could write a collection of short stories. And once I sat down, I, I wrote a burst of a dozen short stories in, in probably six months. And I, my editor suggested that I include the stories that I'd published earlier in my career in magazines and in between my novels and it it turned out that you know there was a good 15 or 20 stories that I'd published in the meantime. I, I'd always been daunted by the short story form at the same time I've always loved it. And, uh, now what's especially daunting about it? Is it that it's so compressed that you have to get everything right in a short story? Yes, I think that's pretty much it. Is that, uh, you know, the novel is, is very forgiving. It can have digressions, it can have false starts, it can have, you know, it can even have patches of, of, of uh, God forbid, undistinguished prose. And, uh, you know, the short story has to burn with that hard gem-like flame, I think. I think that, you know, it has to have a great economy of means. You know, I think that there are those rare writers uh, like John Updike, um, perhaps Richard Ford, who, who seem to be almost ambidextrous, who, who are good in both forms. But so many people, like Carver, like Frank O'Connor, or like most of the novelists we can name, just seem to naturally be drawn to one or the other. And I was, I, I, I was afraid that I was a novelist, for better or worse. I mean, I guess you, you shouldn't c complain about being a novelist. You're a very celebrated writer. You've been famous uh, really from very early age, your late 20s. But I don't think many people know much about you, aside from the the public persona, where are you from? Where did you grow up? Uh, what's your background? Um, yeah, I guess there's a sense in which I didn't exist until I was 29. Uh, but I, um, I was kind. Of, my father was a corporate gypsy, and uh, uh, my family is from the Boston area, Wellesley and Newton. Um, we were a fairly observant Irish Catholic household, and you know I couldn't imagine following my father into you know, into um, the corporate world. Uh, Are you a New Yorker? Is that how you see yourself? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I'm, and, and, you know, I, I mean, I didn't, have the, um, I didn't have the good fortune to be born here, but I had the good sense to move here. And, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't give people a lot of credit for, for being born here. Uh, <laughs> I came to New York at a, at a, at a moment when it, it could have almost gone either way, 19, you know, fall of 1979, um, beginning of the 1980s. New York was just recovering then, but... Uh, there was a moment when people had really written written the city off, and um, and I watched the I watched the prosperity the growing prosperity of the 80s with a with a kind of sense of disbelief. I mean, um, I think as an Irish Catholic, I always think things will go wrong sooner or later. Well, uh, let's talk about the world falling apart. In a way, <laughs> that's been one of your themes for a long time now. You have two brilliant interrelated novels, uh, Brightness Falls and then The, the Good Life. And they feature a couple. Uh, Russell and Corinne Calloway, who seem to be very glamorous Manhattanites, but actually they're not. They're kind of scraping by. Their apartment's too small. There is some of that older story of, of the striver in your fiction, right? Because people well, think of the aristocrats. Yeah. and In my mind, all my characters are strivers. I feel that in recent years I've had to deal with the perception that I'm writing about extremely prosperous and even uh, wealthy people. And, and in fact, um, 
it seems to me that most of my characters, uh, or, or the, the typical character, like Russell and Corrine Calloway, these are people who are renting a loft downtown and sort of clinging, clinging to this um, Manhattan existence, which is just almost um, out of their reach. And uh, you know, on, on the one hand, their their life is, I, I guess, somewhat glamorous uh, in the way that I think the city is glamorous. But they, uh, you know, they're not. Um, but at the same time, they're, they're struggling to maintain their, their foothold in the city. And um, I hope that Manhattan will always be a place that, that, that has room for people who, with, with artistic ambitions, with uh, people who aren't making seven figures a year. And when I came to this city, it was, it was a city of, of bohemians, and it was a city of punk rock and, uh, and, uh, and graffiti artists, and um, hip hop was being invented here, and uh, independent filmmakers were reinventing the cinema. And, and these are the people who seemed to, um, to be in possession of, of the soul of New York. Uh, uh, ten years later, it seemed to have passed uh, um, uh, the, to Wall Street and to the investment bankers uh, who uh, were, were inevitably described in the business pages as rock stars, you know? And, and to me, I don't know, that wasn't why I came, that wasn't the New York that I fell in love with from afar. And um, I would like to think that, you know, um, that the New York that I fell in love with uh, hasn't disappeared entirely or that it that it's coming back. <laughs>